Hey everybody, this is Franco, and today's video is going to be about repairing strip threads on RC cars. So, kind of got into the RC cars, just kind of a, a hobby thing to blow off a little steam, and it's a lot of fun. I really like it, but if you're into RC cars, you'll know that, uh, I mean, driving RC's cars is, is fixing RC cars, right? So you drive them, you play with them, you break them. Um, it's just part of life. One of the things that I found, I have uh, these Traxxas slash cars, is that the plastic parts uh, strip out all the time. And if, you're, if you know anything about this, then you'll see the, uh, the screws that they use are, are mostly standard uh, machine screws. You know, they have machine threads like you would use in like a metal fastener. And that's cool and they work, but they, they strip out of the plastic pretty easily. So, you know, you can replace the parts, but, um, and that's okay, but you can also fix them. So I'm going to show you three ways to, to fix these stripped out threads. So the first thing, maybe the, the easiest thing to do, is to use these, these are special screws that are actually made for plastic. And if I can show you the difference, if I maybe can get the camera operator, ah, very good, to zoom in. Well, you'll see, com compared to the uh, standard machine screws, these plastic screws are, are self-tapping, and they also have a uh, much more aggressive, deeper flute. So the flute is more like a wood screw. In plastic, you get better purchase with that type of a thread. So an easy way, if you, if you strip out a, a, a screw hole, just grab one of these, and you literally can just turn it right on in and it will follow it will follow the uh, original hole and it will cut its own thread and because it's a uh, a more aggressive deeper thread like a, a wood screw you can see it's actually it's actually aggressive enough it can push its way right through the back of this this uh, a arm so that's a pretty strong repair it's easy to do and you can do it out at the track or at the park or wherever you're playing around. You really don't need any special tools. And that will probably save you if you, uh, you strip out a screw. And I've found for certain applications, I just like these screws better. Like for places like this right here, uh, as soon as I strip those out, I just run one of those in there and, and call it a day. And it's great. And I really like it. They're also long enough. You could probably get through a shock or something like that and hold your car together. So that's the first, the first way to do the repair. It's with these, these special screws. These are actually plastic screws, and I bought these from McMaster Car. And I'll put a link in the description to these. So if you want to buy these, you can get them. These are number four by half inch. Um, I also have number six size screws, which are a little bit more aggressive, a little uh, larger diameter. And they work great for a lot, a lot of different repairs. In fact, if you can zoom in right here, I'm using one right here because I, I cracked out the hole that holds the uh, sway bar arm on. And uh, the best way I could come up with to fix it was to run one of these in there. So that'll, that'll work for a while until uh, something else breaks. So that'll, that'll get me a little bit more life out of that body pan. All right, that's the first repair. It's the easiest one. It's, it's probably the, the thing that will cover most of your problems. But... If you want something a little bit more sophisticated, uh, another technique is to use a steel thread insert. And this is something, um, you know, like motorcycle guys and automotive guys will use these. If they strip out a, a hole, you know, in an engine block or something like that, uh, or like an aluminum casting, you can put one of these steel thread inserts in it. And I bought this kit off eBay. I think it was in the neighborhood of $20. And what I got were I got some tools, I got some, some inserts, I, I got some, a special tap, a drill bit. But let me show you how this works. A little bit more complicated, but probably more sophisticated. So this center hole right here is stripped out, and that's the one that I would like to use to mount my shock. So I want to repair that. So the first thing you do is you get, you get the tools that they give you. They'll give you a special tap, they'll give you a special drill bit, and a little tool here that we'll talk about later. So the first thing you do is you take their special tap and you drill out your damaged thread hole. And that's what I'm going to do right now. 
So I'm just going to drill this hole out very careful. I'm just going to try to follow the original hole. There we go. So we drilled it out and you can see we actually took some plastic out of the hole. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take this special tap I'm going to do this with my, my cordless drill, but I'm going to put it in a slow speed. And I'm going to get that tap lined up and I'm going to try to follow the hole carefully. And, uh, there's nothing behind it, so I'm just going to go all the way through. Now normally in metal, you need to clear the chips, but this is plastic. So I'm going to get away with, with not clearing the chips. But if this if this were metal, you'd kind of want to go in, go out, go in, go out, but uh, this is plastic, so we can get away with murder. So we just tapped it. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your special tool, and you're going to take one of these inserts. So I'm going to use this. This is an M3 and uh, 2D, so it's two diameters. If I can get the bag open. So you'll take this special insert, and what it is, it looks like a little spring, but on one end of it, there's a little tang, and that tang is for driving it, and it goes in this little notch in this tool. So what you do is you take this insert, and you want to make sure that the, the tang is pointing towards the end of it, right? The tang goes in the hole first, right? And then you get... You kind of get it started on there. See how it kind of fell on the little, the little, uh, the tang fell into the groove. Then the end of this tool actually has threads in it. So you're actually going to thread, you're going to thread this into the end of the tool. And what that does is it, it gets the insert kind of like all lined up. I'm just going to go until just a little bit of the, the tool sticks out past the end of the, uh, the instrument, right? And I will take this now, and I'm going to line it up, line it up, and I'm going to push, push the tool against the hole, and I'm literally just going to turn this insert into the plastic part. All right, and turn a little more. A little bit more to go. There we go. So the insert's in the hole, and so that tang is still in there. Now, what I've found, a lot of times I can just turn the tool counterclockwise, and it will break the tang right off. If that doesn't work, this special little tool right here is the tab. It's the tab breaker. You just use it to sort of punch out, punch out the tab. But I found with these small inserts, just turning this counterclockwise will snap the tab right off. So now what's in there, if you can zoom in, this is a plastic part, but it actually has a steel thread insert in the hole. So now. Let me take and put the screw back in. So this is the standard, this is the standard M3 screw that was originally used by Traxxas. And I'm going to screw that in. And what you'll find, you'll be able to tell as soon as you start turning it, when you go to torque it up, you're going to see a big difference. All right, much, much stronger than the plastic. In fact, I could, I might actually strip out the head of the screw before I strip out that thread. So much, much stronger thread. And I'll probably go through and do that to all my, my critical components. You know, things on my suspension are like always coming loose. And uh, I'm probably going to go and put these steel thread inserts in all of them. So... 
That's the second way. And I will put links in the description of the video and show you how that works. Now I'm going to show you the third way. Um, put those in there so I don't lose them. The third way are these brass inserts. And these, these are uh, M3 brass inserts. And what these are, they actually, it looks like a little, I don't know, like a little bushing. And it has kind of like teeth, like serrations. I guess, you know, your technical name for this would be a neural on the outside of it. And then it has a threaded hole on the inside of it. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to drill out the hole. And then we're going to use heat to push this in the hole. So for this, this size insert, if I throw the caliper on it, the OD is about 210, 209. So I'm going to use a 3 16 drill bit. And 3 16 is like 187, 188. So it's just a little bit smaller than the, uh, the insert. So I'm using a 3 16 It's just a little bit smaller than the insert. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill Drill out the hole that I want to repair. And we'll use this old A arm. So I'm going to repair this hole right here. So I'm going to carefully try to line this up. If I had a drill press handy, I'd use it, but it's okay. I'm going to carefully line it up, and I'm going to drill out that hole. And you don't have to go all the way through. You just need to go... Oh, well, I did, but you don't have to go all the way through. You just need to go deep enough to get the insert in there. So it's drilled out, and now I'm going to use this soldering iron. This is an old soldering iron that I have that I, I ruined the tip on, but it's, it's going to be good for this. This is actually a 60-watt soldering iron, but probably any soldering iron that you have would work. And literally, I'm just going to put the insert on there and let it start to get warm. And then I'm going to take the insert, and I am going to try to carefully melt it into the hole, trying to keep it nice and square. And there it is. So we'll let that cool off, and then we'll see how good of a job I did getting it in there nice and square. All right, so it's still kind of warm. Let me just, uh, yeah, we're going to let that cool off just for a few more seconds. And while it's cooling off, let me get my tool that I just dropped. So here again, we're going to use the standard um, machine screw type of thread that would have come with this originally. And now instead of threading into plastic, you're actually threading into brass. And it is, it's going to be a much a much stronger repair, much stronger thread than threading into plastic. Because now, instead of pulling out those few little threads, you actually need to spin that whole big diameter. There's a lot greater contact area. So I, I could definitely break it if I wanted to, but that, it's, it's way stronger. Well, there, I, I turned it hard enough to spin it, but it's way stronger than the standard um, thread at hole on plastic. So. Which way do I like the best? Um, I guess from simplicity's point of view, these plastic screws I think are the easiest. You literally just screw them in the hole and away you go. Um, I like the steel insert. It's a little bit more sophisticated, a little more polished, and uh, it makes a really strong repair. So, and the brass inserts, they probably have their place as well. Um, maybe, you know, for places where you can't fit this tool down in to make the repair, maybe instead of that, you know, you use the brass insert. Well, all right. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good time.